kidding. Okay. All right. Well, I will go first. Um, my name is Roland Taylor, as you can tell. Um, I was one of the Rishi interns for the summer 2023 internship, working alongside Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> um, our mentors were Marie and um, Samira. And we worked on Fedora badges, and I'm going to be giving you a short presentation on what we did. So, as you can see, the title of this presentation is Building Badges for the Future, because what we are doing basically is we are upgrading badges, in a sense, visually, and also there are some other upgrades being done, but not by us. Um, that would be the development team. I believe Chris is also joining the development team with that, but he will share more about that in a bit. So just a bit about me, um, who's this guy? <laughs> If you've never seen me before, um, I'm a web and graphics designer. Um, recently founded my own media company after my reaching internship. I'm also an open source advocate now for quite a long time. It will not give away how long. If not, you would guess how old I am. But it's been over over 15 years or so. But I won't tell you the fullness of that. And as I said, it was an outreaching intern for the summer 2023 cohort. And I already told you who I was with. But along with those who I mentioned, there would have been other members of the Fedora Badges Design Team, the wider community. And what did we get up to? It certainly wasn't um, world domination as yet, but we hope to accomplish that eventually with um, Fedora and open source in general. Um, we were moving badges to new templates, and we were also updating existing artwork. And you can read the details on your own. I'll make this presentation available for you if you need it, um, if you need to see it in full, but I won't go through all of those details just to save us some time. Um, we also were filling the gaps because some of the some of the badges did not have the um, artwork that they needed. So some of them we would create new artwork and in others we would try to preserve the original, but we would update it as needed. And we're also preparing for the future. So in this example, you will see that I have Fedora 76, which I will not try to predict when that will happen. But we were preparing, of course, for future badges that possibly will exist. And also, we were setting the tone for what badges will look like in general, what the theme will be in terms of visual design, um, the, the future style, etc. So as you can see, there are some styles here that were not in badges before. For instance, this gradient style background is a decision that I actually contributed. And thankfully, Maria and Spira approved of this. And so this is one of the new backgrounds that badges have. Typically, badges don't have gradients in the background, but I managed to sneak this one in. So, um, but yes, we are working on consistency and you know finding ways to make all of the, the badges not only improve you know the new and improved theme that we're going with but to keep them in line with what we would have had before while setting a new tone for the future so what are some of the goals that we had in this project so some of the goals that we had were to improve compliance because as i mentioned earlier some existing designs the older badges did not match the style guide and that's one of the things that we really wanted to you know, make consistent to have everything matching up with the style guide. We wanted to con to maintain a consistent style. So while we were producing new artwork, we also wanted to maintain consistency with what already existed. So you would know that uh, Fedora is, of course, a community, and many people across the years have worked on this project, on badges especially. So basically, we wanted to respect and honor what they have done and not, you know, um, like basically erase their work. So we try to maintain consistency in that way. But we also wanted to identify issues and solutions by learning from our mistakes so we can set a course for better methods going forward. So one of the things that Chris and I did is that we would have actually listed any issues that we discovered while we were working on the badges, and then we used those to help to guide what we're going into the style guide in the future so that anyone who joins us after will be able to you know avoid those issues in the future so also 
we worked on <laughs> this is a pretty big deal. We worked on over six hundred badges, and you are probably going to wonder how did we stay organized with all of that since we are not using the venerable badge GPT. So how we were able to stay organized is that in the previous internship before us, um, I embarrassingly forgot her name. Forgive me, <laughs> but um, our the previous intern who's not associated with her, Nakia, right? I don't know why I forgot her name just now, but anyway, Nakia would have um, worked on this spreadsheet and basically she would have listed most of the badges that already exist. There were a few that, that were missing, but we had to hunt those down because some of them were all old repos, et cetera. And what we did is we added all of the badges that were added since our internship. Then we added some that were no longer in use, but are still somehow listed in the system. And we added then onto that all of their Peugeot repo, repos, um, well, the repo links. We added sources. We added their review, review status. Um, we added categories. We added the status of their Fedora branding and whether improvements were needed. So this spreadsheet is still available. And I believe that um, anyone who would need access to it can get access if they want to contribute and they want to see what has not been completed while we were working on this. Or if you wanted to see any badges that have been added since then, I believe you can go there as well. You can get that information. So we also collected and shared our work because open source is about collaboration. So we collected the finished SVG files into a Google Drive to allow for a reuse of new or they had artwork, artwork and elements. And wherever possible, we reuse existing assets or assets generated in the course of the project. So for instance, Chris would have designed some new artwork at different points in the project, and then it would have reused what he did, or I would have designed new artwork, and then he reused what I did, or we both would have used what already existed in designing new badges or in updating the existing artwork. So in the true spirit of, of open source community, Chris and myself continue to contribute to the team wherever possible as do our mentors and other past interns. And I'm going to go through now a uh, um, short selection of some of the badges and what went into their designs. And I'm gonna do this very quickly. So with the vendorizer, um, that you can see the old one and the new. And the incentive for uh, redesign here was that the Fedora um, logo was the old Fedora logo. Uh, also, we needed to fill some more space because the new template, of course, is a different size and it has different spacing. There's no longer that white outline. So we had to fill the space more appropriately. And then we wanted to set a tone for new badges because it's important for this badge um, to basically set the tool for others. And also the blue Fedora, um, the new blue Fedora, Fedora logo is a pretty bright blue, so it did not fit with the background as easily, and we had to change that. Also, this is one of my favorites, and I believe the, the rest of the team would agree. Um, this is the cat came back. Um, this one, if you took ownership of a previously ARPAN package, um, basically, this one was redesigned almost from scratch. The package is the same, so we kept that consistent, but the cat's paw is new. And uh, they would have designed this one because we had missing artwork. Um, basically, the original artwork couldn't be found. I could find some of the assets that were used to make it, but not the actual original art. And also, some improvements were possible, and the consensus of the team was that the original design was not good. And it was not consistent with the sale of other badges, so consistency was needed. And there were some additional considerations, which was that we decided to maintain the classic package icons to save time and effort, but also for nostalgia. And we needed to improve the cartoonishness of the badge art. And also, this design took several iterations, which I'll just show you quickly in the interest of time. I'm not going to read all of this to you. But as we can see, it took me quite a number of <laughs> tries at this one to get it right. And this happened to be the case with many of the designs. So it's still a wonder that we got through over 600 in the um, internship. So let me just run through some quick examples. I'm not actually going to give you a breakdown of these. So we have Bonafide. This is one that I worked on. 
because the badge artwork is new. We try to keep the original style, obviously, but it's completely new. Then there is the 3D printing SAG member, which is also new in terms of that. I did have to redesign a few things, a few elements, but I try to keep it as close to the original as possible. Then there's the Oscon attendee badge, 2017 attendee badge. This one was just changed in terms of colors. Mirror Mirror on the Wall, this is another favorite of mine. This is one where I basically kept the original design, changed the logos, and changed the background. And then finally, one of my personal favorites again, which is the Senior Badger um, 2. And then that's the, if you got 50 Fedora badges, but they mean you have to really be working pretty hard to get those. And as we can see, we try to preserve the original theme while still adding some new styles to this one. And finally, if you want me to hop in on a design, feel free to ping me on Fajora, on Matrix, or elsewhere at Roland Bixler. And I'll hand it over to Chris. Hello. Okay. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. So I'll be making a follow up presentation through Roland's presentation. So my name is Chris. Some people must have met me yesterday. I hope I'm audible. I'm audible, Roland. Yeah, OK, thank you. So my name is Chris. I was a past outreach intern under the Federal Bodies Design Team at the last um, concluded May 2023 cohort. So I'll be speaking more on some concepts that Roland discussed earlier. So with the budget revamp, we had a target of enhancing contributor experience. We wanted contributors to take pride in their badges. So for contributors to love and take care of their badge and put in effort into earning the badge, it, the badge has to be rewarding and appealing. So under the mentorship of Samira and Marie, which Roland mentioned earlier, we were able to do this. We They helped us to develop our initial ideas and we responded with the feedback they gave us to create a lot of more visual appealing badges. So what does a, a typical revamp look like? I sneaked this badge in, it wasn't, it's not public for now. So. This is the common box contributor badge. The original badge was a classic of its time, but it needed some improvement. It was made 10 years ago. So if we look here at the van badge, we can already notice that the badge is already more prominent because of this introduction of the new template. The new template allows the art to be more prominent with, the, with new colors and brighter appeal to the eye. We have a lot of new concepts that we adopted using the style guide to make more visual appealing badges. So when we created badges, there was an importance to always preserve the meaning. We, we could change several things like the concept, the concepts and the illustrations, but everybody needs to be able to recognize the badges that they end before from what that they end before to what they have now. So if we look here, this is the upstream badge. If we notice the packages, it was a flow of like a stream, yeah, like a flow of packages. If we notice it in the new badge, the concept remains the same. The there is retention in the meaning and the idea, and it's recognizable. So I, I believe anyone who has a badge like this and sees the next one should recognize this badge. We don't want people to like have an old badge and when the revamp is complete and the showcase is done, you can't recognize the badges you end. So the next badge on that is a senior editor badge. It's they originally use the concept of a typewriter to that shows that a user or a contributor has edited up to 1000 wiki pages. We illustrated this well with a book this time around. The concept is more modern, more it looks modern, it's fresh and visually balanced, but it it still is, it retains the same meaning. Behind the scenes, how did we work? What tools did we use? Typically, like Roland explained earlier, we made use of Google Spreadsheet 
we use that to keep track of all our work and taking and and updates taking feedback and updates to more recent badges it also helps for anyone coming in up and that is not um under our team could look into it and understand what the process has been and be able to track in badges from the old to the new badge our primary tool for design was inkscape as we all know we had several exciting meetings on jitsi and element was our primary communications for chat checking as we all know i, I know almost everybody uses elements here but we use that severally to take in feedback and respond to feedback so let's look at some showcase of revamped work if we look at this but this is it's a new new day new cake badge it's if we look at the revamp badge we can notice that originally the old badge had some muted colors it's not so bright it was a wonderful badge but at at this time we 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 looked forward to having a badge with a better visual quality which improved, which improved art and brighter colors this is if we look at this, I will just run through it while I'm running out of time so that we can have a question section. If we look at this badge too, we notice a change in the background. The stroke patterns on the badger were inconsistent, and now we have a revised stroke in the new badge. The background is brighter, which allows us to notice more emphasis on the graphics. The shadows were taken out, and we have a more clearer badge. I think just looking at it we can notice that we can recognize the characters and the text here better and the concept this is a badge in the quality cat um, quality category we can notice here that the art is maintaining the template compared to the old badge so this is was a design concept that was used this is not wrong but with our new style guide we decided to have a new style guide and new templates we decided to have all our artwork maintained inside the template so this is an example of a badge that had this that was, that was a transfer and we maintained all the artwork in the badge the template this is the hard bleed badge so many people might know this badge the concept here was to also maintain the art in the template with revised stroke and more clear, clear, clarity and emphasis on the graphics this is clickbait. We can notice here, just like Roland mentioned earlier, a change in the logo. We a lot of the old badges were using the old federal logo with the new concepts and with the river. We had to put all the new logos in to have a more modern badge and recognizable badge. We shouldn't have badges with the old logo when we already have the new logo. This is my last, this is the last badge I'll be showcasing. Uh, this is also a revamp. We can notice here the bad looks more modern the illustration looks better and we have revised stroke on it the stroke separates the elements in the badge from the background and i originally i know everybody will prefer this to the old one thank you so any we have time i think we have about four minutes for questions and answer so any question and answer Any question? Pause. I can see some comments anyway. Thank you. I the badges are gorgeous. Absolutely. Thank you. So amazing job. So does anybody has a question for us? Oh. Oh, do we have a favorite badge? Uh, Chris, would you want to go first on this one? You said? Sorry, I didn't get you. Oh, um, we do have questions in the Q and A tab um, Thank you. on the right hand side. So I was asking if you wanted to go first on this one. Do you have? Oh, a favorite do we have badge? favorite badge? Yeah, I have a series of favorite badges, but some stand out more than the other. Uh, I think the common box contributor badge is my favorite badge. I sneaked it in because I liked it so much. Um, I would have to say I also have a favorite badge and that 
well, I actually have multiple favorites in one of those people who never has one. Um, and I did showcase them in the presentation. So the one with the snake um, for, um, like, if you have 50 badges, I personally really love that one. It was fun to work on. Okay, the, I'm going to actually scroll to the bottom because I see there are a number of um, questions here at the bottom. So how did we find out about Fedora? Oh, this one, I guess you can say this, Chris. Are there many other Fedora users in Nigeria? I, I think that question, I think maybe it was for Precious. But for, as for oh, now, okay. we, yes. But if I will answer that, as for now, we are, there's no way we can track the amount of users we have. But I know that the name Fedora is not new. So several people are informed of it. But well, how um, how many people in particular? I can't track it because well, I I only know. Let's say I don't know a lot of people that use that uses Fedora, but I know I'm sure that there will be people in Nigeria that use it. Um, well, I'll answer for myself. I know that mm -hmm. I just noticed that question was from the previous session. I think it's yeah. pretty relevant. Um, I don't know many people who use um, Fedora in Barbados personally. I know that there are a scattered number of us um, and open source users here. I actually help with some advocacy in terms of getting people aware of open source software in Barbados um, for a number of years now. But it is a little bit of a difficult market to penetrate at this point in time, so I'm hoping to promote that a little more. Um, Another question here is, how do you use HK before starting this project? I'll take that first. Um, yes, I have been using HK pretty much since HK existed. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that answers that one. So for me, I actually started using Inkscape in my integration into this project. I, I must have heard about it, but I wasn't really involved with it but using it I, I have not been able to use something else it's very easy and i think i was able to pick up to speed very fast with it so i think that's a very good part of, of inkscape so there's another question about the btrfs but i'm not sure the badge in particular you're talking about but the there is a way we have tracked all of these badges and we are still improving because our internship has ended but we are still working from time to time to see how we can catch up to speed with badges. So we should be able to get the badge up and running sooner or later. By the time of the um, time the revamp is completed, I think you should have a very modern badge coming up. Um, I'll, I'll answer that question. Um, I actually was to work on that one. Uh, that would be a category that one of the categories that I was working on. Um, we did have some discussions um, between myself and Marie over whether that would be updated or not. So um, we did come to a decision, I believe, on that one. I would have to check back our chats on that. I think we're planning to keep the, mostly keep the original artwork and just transfer it to the new template. But if you would like for that badge to be updated visually, that is also possible. Um, there's another question here that we didn't cover. Are there any plans to get the Fedora badges to be available in the future at Fedora's web state? I am not certain if we would be able to answer that. I know that a few of the badges do have different languages included in them. Like there was one that I worked on that has at least three symbols from different, um, I guess you would say alphabets, but um i don't think most of the badges use different languages but i guess the development team could pitch in in the chat on that one so the next question i can see here is do any of you plan on giving a workshop on inkscape in the next creative freedom summit so uh, about that i think we can look forward to it so we can plan towards it it's something that will be nice enough for us to do it since with all our experiences and what we have done with what so far, i think we 
are one of the best options to do that. Well, we have a lot of experiences. And since we had a very projectile goat from being a beginner and to maybe becoming a pro now, I would say, I don't. I think our mentors should judge us more on that. But I, I think we should be able to teach better since we started it from the let's say early stages to now. I think it's something we can look forward to. What do you think, Roland? Actually, I'm glad that question came up because it's a reminder to me that I have a second session to submit to the Great History News Summit. Um, I did do a short course on a skit about two years ago or so, and I'm planning to do a follow-up to that um, in the summit, if possible. So um, it's called the Humanality Project. I want more details for you, but it, 